Hello everyone and I hope you're all doing very well. So the Reapers have asked me to do a video on ground effect in DCS world, whether it's modelled, how it's modelled, which planes it applies to, how much it applies, which, what are the variances between the different planes and stuff like that. And uh, now I was aware that such a thing called ground effect was a thing in real life and in DCS for helicopters. I know that because I've flown the Huey quite a lot. What I didn't know was that ground effect also affects aeroplanes in real life, uh, fixed wing aircraft. I didn't know it was a thing until now. So we've had a little chat about it and now we're going to see if it's modelled in DCS. So the main statement I've got here is a statement on ground effect for fixed wing aircraft. I mean this this may also apply to helicopters as well but stand by. When you're in ground effect you have smaller wingtip vortices, less downwash and more vertical lift, all of which dramatically reduce induced drag. And it all happens within one wingspan or less of the ground. So the next time you find yourself floating down the runway, go around and try another landing at a, at a little slower speed. So this is like mind-blowing to me. I, di I, I didn't know this existed. So let's just summarise that. When we're with flying within one wingspan or less of the ground, we have uh, smaller wingtip vortices. So I'm not really sure what that means. We have less downwash and we have more vertical lift, more lift pushing us up, all of which dramatically reduce induced drag. So I have absolutely no idea how that works in terms of elementary physics. So the first thing is, I would like you guys, as you do, to start explaining why this is a thing. What is the elementary, you know, layman's physics that, that makes this work? I can't even for the slightest moment think why this works. I mean, in terms of more vertical lift, I guess it kind of makes sense. You might get some kind of compression of the air below the aircraft. That's, that's all I can think of. Why it would reduce the drag? No idea. Less downwash? No idea. Change the wingtip vortices? No idea. So this is all very exciting stuff. So I'm going to try fixed wing planes first. Helicopters, we're going to kind of measure it and test it in a slightly different way. But I know it works in helicopters because I've tried it. Fixed wing planes, I've never experienced this before in DCS. Uh, but I've never been looking for it. So let's go try it. Um, now the way that I'm thinking in my mind that we're going to measure it is the two things I think we should feel are the floatiness. So the induced, uh, the uh, sorry, the increase in lift. Uh, I'm guessing it's going to kind of push us away from the ground a bit if it's giving us more lift so we'll see if we can feel that um, may be possible and we can look for in uh, the, the reduction in induced drag it says so our plane should for the same amount of engine power go faster i mean as uh, an engine with the same amount of power uh, rises in terms of altitude it gets faster right you know uh, to an extent at least you'll get your maximum speed at about 30,000 feet, 40,000 feet in the kind of planes that we're going to be testing today. So if we find that the speed of the plane increases as we go, you know, from say 200 feet down to this very low kind of 20, 30 feet, then we'll know that the induced drag on the plane is less and ground effect is modelled. I've been doing DCS for a long time now and I've been testing them a lot. So um, what I'm expected to see is different planes will be modelled differently in terms of ground effect. And we'll probably see different effects if it is there on planes and, and maybe none on others. So, you know, uh, well, we're just going to see how it goes because I don't really know. So Miros 2000, why don't we start with that? Nice and easy to fly. Off we go. So first things first, let's set ourselves at uh, two or three hundred feet where we will not be within any... Um, a ground effect because we're outside of a wingspan and we're going to turn our true speed on so you can see at the bottom that is satellite true speed there and that is satellite altitude so those are the important kind of uh, empirical test testable figures i'm just going to choose myself a, uh, a throttle about halfway up i'm just going to level myself out now uh, i suppose i could do autopilot but i don't think i really need to so let's just let the um at uh, 200 feet just over 200 feet let's let the let it settle let the speed settle okay that's settled there so uh 200 to 300 feet we've got a speed at this power setting of 414 knots true and what i've got is uh, i'm not going to use trim today because if i use trim it's going to upset my findings but what i can tell you is that 
I am being sucked down to the ground slightly. It's not ground effect. It's just you know how the trim is says the neutral trim is set up in the Mirage at the speed and whatnot. Um, and what I'm going to do is when I go down to the ground effect area, I'll see if that changes. I'll see if it kind of pushes me up with that same amount of trim. Okay. So everything exactly the same. I'm not going to touch the throttle. I'm now going to go down to what we would consider ground effect area. So less than the wingspan. Uh, so what's the wingspan on this? Maybe. 35 feet. First time I've flown a Mirage down here, so we've just got to be a little bit careful. So what I think we'll do is just have a quick look at... That's 25 feet, it says. Uh, uh, yeah, that is literally about 25 feet to the bottom of the plane there, so we can afford to come down quite a bit to get ground effect in play. Okay. So what I can tell you is the first thing, in terms of what the plane's doing up and down, there's no obvious increase in lift. I'm still being pulled down at the same amount, you know, just due to how I've got my trim set up. So there's no obvious, um, should I concentrate here. There's no obvious increase in lift per se. And we're kind of bouncing around about 10 feet. So that's, I mean, wingspan technically is, you know, full left to full right. And that I think is going to be within ground effect. Uh, look at the speed. Uh, oh, we have increased. Look at that. We have increased by five knots. Let's go for a little bit longer. Try and keep it within this ground zone. I'm just going to fly like that. Uh, I'm going to zoom in, actually. I'm trying to read the altitude off the bottom there. And fly at the same time. Or 20 knots. Or 21 knots. Oh, we're getting a little bit pushing our luck a little bit here. So that's four feet apparently. So if the guy's six feet tall. I'd say that's less than four feet. I'd say that's about three feet there, two or three feet at the back there. Either way, that is pushing our luck a little bit. Oh, look, we've done something to the water. That's cool. Right, now that is how you get under radar, right, baby? A little bit careful here, just a little bit back sticking. Three feet. Oh! Oops, let's try that again. I think there may have been some kind of suckage there. Okay, my throttle's in the same position. I hope it registers it. Let me just try and guess. Back down to those speeds. When I got down to within four feet, it just seemed to suck me in. But it may be my... It may be just me judging it wrong. But let's just have another go at that. Right, so... 30 feet. Twenty feet. Ten feet. Okay, that's where it tops out. So it tops out at um, some ground effect. It looks like it's going to top out after everything at 425 knots. So 425, so that sets is 11 knots faster than at 250 feet. So that is definite ground effect, right? 200, 425 knots. And I just want to get a, just a feel again when I get within this kind of eight foot range, whether it sucks me down, because that's what it felt like. So I've got back stick on definitely not sucking me down there per se okay so yeah, I've got more and more back so it definitely does yeah right that's why I crashed the first time what you find is yes you get closer and closer and closer the more back stick you need just to fly level and when you get to kind of four knots I'm going back stick more back stick more back stick and it's sinking down faster um, now it doesn't really matter because by the time it affected that mirage there you're down you're already down at kind of below eight feet and no one in the world ever anywhere ever is going to fly eight feet but it's just a thing to note so conclusion mirage we can fly uh, terminal 11 knots task faster within one wingspan of the ground and below kind of eight feet you get a what feels like a 
quadratically increasing suction force down to the ground. And it doesn't say anything about that in that quote. It said it increases lift. So why am I being sucked in? Um, I'm going to have to hand it over to you boffins in your viewers, really, because that is a bit beyond me. Some kind of effect, uh, maybe a vacuum it creates, low pressure below the plane, something. Um, don't know. It's obviously doing something. Right, uh, that's a mirage. Uh, now you're probably asking, this is over the sea, and uh, what happens if uh, over the land? Will it make any difference to the sea? I will test that, but uh, let's do the sea first. Probably automatic trim, so it's going to be nice and easy. Um, because it does have fully automatic trim in the F-16, I probably won't be able to feel that suction. It will probably compensate for it, uh, I expect. So, we'll, yeah, so I probably won't be able to feel the suction, but let's um, try everything else. Right, so let's do the 250 feet test. I'm just going to put myself at whatever throttle that is there. Also, this ground effect, do we know if it's felt more at high speeds than low speeds? Um, I don't know. Let's see what you guys think. Let's just go kind of half throttle. Right, I'm seem to have equalised there. So, let's just sort ourselves out. Nice neutral stick to the F-15. Like I said, it trims itself pretty much automatically, so it's pretty clever stuff. Okay, so F-15 is 472 TAS at 250 feet. Let's try and ground effect. Thirty feet. Twenty feet. I'd like to do is just check the model because where the altitude is actually measured from, I'm not sure. Uh, it looks about 20 feet, doesn't it? And wingspan's what, 45 feet or something? Uh, so, how does the stick feel? Ah, now that's interesting. The stick is pushing me up. It wasn't doing that before. Let's go down a bit. Right, watch this. I'm going to go hands off stick when I'm a little bit lower. Just got to be careful not to crash. Right, hands. So wait, wait, wait. Hands off stick. It's going up on its own, look. It wasn't doing that at 250 feet. Interesting. So we're getting some pushing, some up pushing that we weren't getting in the Mirage. And again, I don't want to put too much, give that too much credence because we've got different trims doing different things in the background and I don't know what those th trims are doing. So, but it's just a feel thing, you know. I definitely feel that pushing me up. Right. Next is the speed. Can we get more speed down here? I can't remember what we got. Uh, up there, I've got it written down, so it's okay. Right, so I've got to keep it a little bit forward stick. You might not be able to see it because the amount is very small, but I've got to definitely push this nose down to keep it down here. I didn't have to do that with the Mirage. With the Mirage, I had to pull the nose up. And are we going to get suction is the other thing. Yeah, I mean, I don't really want to get much lower than that, and it's getting slower. So it appears that, Jesus, that's low. Uh, it appears that the F-15 is not modeled for ground effect in that it does not increase. So we're down to four, six, eight. We've actually lost four knots in the F-15, and we're all the way down at, um, you know, six feet. So I don't think we're going to get any lower than that. Um... So not modelled in the F-14, although it does appear to be pushing me up a bit. So maybe a slight bit of modelling there. Uh, now I just want to see if it has any suction down here. I don't think it will do, but just how I'm feeling it, but we'll go and have a look as well. Okay, so let me just pull up a little bit. So. Right, let's see if we can get any suction. No, definitely no suction. It's trying to pull itself away from it. I'm physically having to make it crash by pushing forward. Look how low! Wow, look how low that is. <laughs> That's pretty cool. It says three feet, but that looks like more than three feet to me. We're literally touching the waves. Okay, so 
maybe a tiny bit of updraft, but nothing really there modeled in the uh, 15. So uh, let's go to Hornet. Now, I've heard interesting things about the Hornet that it creates a. Uh, I don't really want to say it because I don't understand it, but I think it creates a low pressure zone apparently uh, when you go very low. Something to do with the intakes and sucks it down. Um, like the Mirage, but extreme. So. Let's go and have a go, shall we? Right, so let's do our 250 knots first of all. Oh, sorry, 250 altitude. Interesting how slow this plane is at more or less the same throttle. Yeah, that was a bit of a pain in the butt, but we are settled on 506. So, F18. 506, TAS. Actually, let's just let that level out a bit. Yeah, it was 506, wasn't it? Okay, let's go for ground effect. So that's 56 feet. Right. 40 feet. Oh, okay. Yeah, right. That's a thing. It's sucking me into the water, like, aggressively. Like the Mirage, but aggressive, aggressive. And I don't think we'll even be able to test the ground effect because we just can't get down there. But watch this. Watch what I have to do. Ah! I was half back sick there and it just crashed into the water seal. So a massive suction force happens in the F-18 below kind of 40 feet so in that ground. So we won't be able to test the drag but and the lift but for whatever reason we do get that massive suction force. Uh, so what, what is that? Is that creating a massive low pressure zone down there? What is it doing on the F-18? Is it realistic? Uh, you know, I have no idea. So Right, so we've got some... Eh, um, weird results so far. Let's put it that way. Let's try Tomcat. Okay, Tomcat now. This is the first plane we've flied today without an automatic or semi-automatic trim. So there's no computers in the background uh, messing around with a trim. So um, this, should, this should give us the most... Uh, uh, I guess the most accurate results because of that. Right, we'll go to 250 feet. We'll see what speed we can get. It's going to be a little bit more difficult. I'll, I'll probably have to use the autopilot for this. A lot of autopilots just don't work down this low. They're just not programmed to work down this low. Autopilot on. That appears to be working, doesn't it? Right. That makes my job a bit easier. Oh, this one's fast at half throttle, isn't it? Oh, what a fast plane. Look at that. 600 knots. Half, 40% throttle. Amazing. Okay, 598, so F14, 598. Next, we're going to go for a ground effect. Stand by. So she should be trimmed out nicely for me. I can already feel it's going to be harder to control down here than the others. Okay, the first thing is there's a definitely upwards force that there wasn't up there. It was trimmed out perfectly well, remember, up there. Um, and down here, there's something pushing me up again, like the F-15. Although, saying that, I'm not within close enough to get ground effect yet, so I'll probably ignore that, to be honest. But I'm having to push forward, push the stick forward, at the same speed, to go down here. Forty feet. I'm having to push down quite a lot now to keep down here. So there's quite a large force pushing me up at this point. Oh, now it's the opposite. Oh no. No, I think I just haven't got right. I've got the hang of it yet. Stand by. Let's try that again. is just a lot harder to control down here. It says we're 25 feet. That's about 40 feet, though. So, the there's something wrong with the model. 30 feet? That doesn't look like 30 feet, does it? Maybe it is. Let's try getting a bit lower. It's actually quite hard to do this in this plane. It almost feels like there's something fighting me.
Okay. That's 10 feet. So those dorsal fins are about 6 to 7 feet, aren't they? So we're as low as we ever want to be. And we've actually got the uh, speed decreasing significantly. Let me check. Yeah, we're down 4 knots, look. So that's a weird. So we've, we've got increased drag in the F-14. Uh, a bit like uh, the F-15, which was increased drag by exactly the same amount, actually. Hmm, this is weird. And they're getting a definite upwards force as well, getting pushed up. They were definitely in... Definitely in it there. Having to fight to keep it down. Oh man, yeah, this slowed down. Look, it slowed down. Right, so it slows down down here. The F-14. There is increased drag, and there's a there's a buffeting force pushing me upwards. I can feel. Let's see if I get any suction really low down. Nah, there's nothing there. It says we're three feet off the ground, but that dorsal fin is now touching the waves. Put down five nine three, five nine two. It's gone down to five nine two, and that was an upwards force. And the F fifteen was an upwards force. Mirage was a downwards force. F eighteen was a massive downward force. Hmm, weird results, hey? Weird results. Uh, what else have we got to try? Try another FC3 plane, shall we? Oh, I can't remember how to use the autopilot on this. This might be a little bit awkward. Uh, boom. She seems to be set there pretty well at 364. I think that is set there at 364. 366, so flanker. 366. Okay, let's try ground effect. Gonna keep on the same trim. Although I never really set the trim particularly well anyway. Oh, she actually feels a lot better down here. Feels a lot more stable down here. I'm getting used to flying low now. Okay, what kind of What are we out there at ten feet? Oh cool looking bird, right? That is a cool looking bird. Yeah, that's about 10 feet, I'd agree with that. Carry on. Oh, careful cut. We're easy now. So we're within ground effect. We've got two extra knots. Eh, you know. Three knots. Quite you. Getting all that. She's actually a lot more comfortable down here than she is up there. Don't know why, it's just she's very neutral down here. 370 knots, yep. We've got ground effect. Three seven one. And we're bobbing up and down as well, which if anything should should scrub off speed, so three seven two. Shame I'm not confident with the autopilot, I could just bung it on here and just buzz along. Three seven three. Probably the easiest plane I've got we've got to fly down here. It really is quite easy. Three seven four. Still increasing speed. And we've been all the way down to three feet, there's no suction of any kind. There's maybe the smallest of upwards forces, but three seven five.
Okay. I've got the feeling it will actually continue going on, but we don't have all day. So flanker three, seven, five, and a small upwards force. Noted. Um, the annoying thing is we've got a really weird mix of results here. Uh, we've got a good ground effect in the flanker. We've got a reduction in speed of the F-15, which made no sense. Mirage, good ground effect. F-14, a reduction in speed. The F-18, a huge suction force. Mm, so what we're seeing so far is just a complete different effect on all of the different aircraft. Um, and I don't know if that's realistic or not, so... I guess we'll try an F-5 and then we'll go and do some choppers. Mmm, F-5, my favourite. Where's the VSI? Where's the VSI, guys? Where's the VSI? There it is. Oh, I keep reading the VSI upside down. I don't know what's the matter with me today. Being an idiot. Right, that's it there. F-5, 3, F5, 3, 4, 6. F-5, 3, 4, 6. Let's try ground effect. Keep the trim the same. We up. Whoopsie, silly cap. Oh, she's lethal. The one thing about this plane is F5, she's lethal in a dive. I don't get to fly her very often, and the first thing I do is crash in a dive because I forget how lethal she is. 17 feet. 16 feet. Oh, she's nice down here. I'm definitely getting something pushing me up. It's very feelable. I can see, feel something pushing me up. I'm having to f work quite hard, like the Tomcat, to push it down. Really hard to push it down. Definite, definitely something going on here. Let's just see what the speed was. 346. Well, I'm not gaining a speed, so there's no reduction in drag. Although I am bouncing up and down a bit, so... I'm having to do quite a lot of force push forward. You can't really see it in the graphic, but you'll have to take my word for it. I'm having to push the nose into the ground. No, we're reducing speed down here, so an increase in drag. But a really big increase in lift. As you can see, I'm bouncing up and down quite violently, and the closer I get to the ground, the more in the more force it's pushing on me. It's like a, a spring. The closer I get to the ground, the harder that spring pushes, the more stick input up I have to put. I wonder if, um, when we analyse this at the end, if we're going to see any commonality between the pushy uppiness, the increase in lift, and the increase in drag. That would be interesting, wouldn't it? Right, uh, it goes all the way down to 338. It goes down, and there's a an hard exponential force upwards. So that's force downwards, force downwards, force downwards, force upwards. Uh, that's it. I think that'll do for aeroplanes, uh, for fixed wings planes. Fixed wing planes. Uh, next we're going to jump in some chopper. No, the next thing we're going to do is just take two of these planes. I'm going to test them over the land, a flat bit of land, to make sure they have the same effect. And if they do, then that rules out any differences between being over the sea and being over the land. I doubt there are any differences, but I'll go and quickly try. I may or may not include it in the video. Let's just stand by. Okay, FIV, just because my throttle is still in the same position. Uh, excuse me. Now this land is not going to be at zero feet, so we're just going to be a little bit careful about how low we go here. Trim's all messed up. Um, let me just need to check my speed. It was 338 and lower. Ah, it's put me at full throttle. That's annoying. I'm going to have to do the test fully again, standby. Okay, we've got to, had to do a new throttle setting. Let's see what we get. Going to even out at about 314, I think. 250 feet. Yeah, it's about 314 there. Happy with that. Uh, so let's retest 314 over land. Let's see what happens when we go down. Whoa! Oh! Wow! I survived and I'm not invincible. Super cat. I guess, is all you can say about that. I think we can continue. As I said, I told you, this thing in a dive is a death trap. Just because of how they modelled it. So what only thing you've got to be careful about. And it's, yeah, it's pushing me up again. It's pushing me up again. And it's 
probably go and be going slower again. So I've got that springy force again I can feel. And that wasn't there at the altitude. Now interestingly, it's keeping me at the same speed this time. Springy force is there, but the it's going faster now, what the fuck? Man, this is confusing. So over sea, this thing goes slower. Over land, this thing goes faster. Man, I'm confused as hell. Why is that? If you're wondering why I'm so high up, it's because this ground is not um, its not zero feet. I don't know what it's at. That's ASL we've got there, so we're just about 30 feet. So we need to keep about 20 feet. It's easier said than done when it's constantly trying to spring you up. Like, aggressively spring you up. And I, well, I don't think I've got the skill to do this. No, I haven't. You're just getting an oscillation. Even if you trim it, you're just getting an oscillation. Hmm. It's going to be a big, tough day. This is right. So F five uh, over that was over C, and this is over ground. F five is was three one four, and then up to three one eight. So it got slower over C, and faster over land, but it still had the same springy effect. So what happens? Uh, one thing I better do is find that throttle position. To uh, replicate the three six, three four six knots to see if it's speed dependent. Right, I found that original throttle setting. Uh, we got three four six last time, and it looks like we're going to get three four six again. No, we're going to go higher because it's been a pain in the butt. Yes, it is. We're going to get three four six. But level out. You got it. We got it. So three four five there. So this repeats the out to sea test. Now let's see what happens. Down here. So I've got this horrible springy spring spring we've got to do. Spring, 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 stop springing me. slowing me down just like it did to out to sea look it's slowing me down no sorry no it's speeding me up haha <laughs> idiot oh bugger I'm gonna have to watch this video back it was 346 we had up there wasn't it a minute ago as close as I can get to the ground without the massive spring effect coming in, so it's the best I can do, I'm afraid. 350. And let's test back at 250 again. Oh shit, what's going on? Oh, stupid fucking computer. Being a dick. Come on VSI, play ball, play ball. Yeah, it's going to go to 346 again, 345, isn't it? So 345, we've got an increase. Oh man, that confuses everything. Uh, C, land, land. So we get 345 over land with this power setting of 350. It's an increase in five knots. Right, so it's what I've seen so far, I know you can't see what I'm writing, but it's consistent with the F5. Whichever speed I go, I get extra knots down low over land, and I get a reduction in speed over the sea. So what I need to now do is retest the other planes over the land and see what results 
we get. So this is getting a little bit complicated, but we'll get there. Okay, F15 next. Not quite sure what to expect this time. Let's go. Okay, at that throttle setting, we've got three, six, seven. Let's go for ground effect. <clears throat> So, that is... It's 30 feet, 29 feet there, 28 feet, yeah, that's it, that's in ground effect. So, kind of 25 to 30 feet is going to be ground effect, let's uh, see what we get. Ah, a reduction in speed. Oh, this makes no bloody sense. Reduction in speed and a small upwards force. That's settled there. I'm just going to three. Oh, no. Uh, in fact, the speed stayed the same. 366, 367. Uh, and, you know, altitude is as low as we're going to want to go. It's about four feet, five feet off the ground. Uh, small upwards force. So that doesn't tally with the F5, which makes no sense at all. Okay, let's try. I expect this will just suck into the ground again. We'll just give it a go quickly. That just sucks into the ground, so F-18, massive downwards force again. Next pay. Let's get our 250 feet on the go. Pretty static there, so that's Mirage, 536, TAS, 250 feet. Let's try ground effect. So 27 feet, we're about mm, 10 feet off the ground. So kind of 25 to 30 again. Definite speed increase. Ground effect on the Mirage again is 5.42, so it's a 6 knot TAS increase and a small downwards force. Next, uh, so that is the Tomcat at 5.34. Okay, let's get rid of you. Should be nicely trimmed out. <clears throat> right, I'm getting pushed upwards, so that's an upward force. I'm having to do quite a lot of forward stick in the Tomcat to beat this ground effect. How low is that? Feels fairly low. Feels low, doesn't it? Hmm. Seen lower. Now, interestingly, the speed has not budged at all. Let me look over the C. In the C, it was... Oh, and the C actually decreased. And let's keep going and see what happened. Oops! It's a silly cap. Hopefully it saved my... Um Hopefully it saved my throttle position. What was it for? Uh, three, five, four, five, three, four. It was. Right, yeah, it saved my throttle position. So starting again, 
534. Autopilot off. Try not to crash this time, Pat. The sink rate is too high. Speed is the same. Oh, now that is low. It says we're 20 feet, but we are literally in the grass at that point. No wonder I crashed last time. So unless the grass drag has effect, which I don't think it does, it has no effect on the speed. So 533 th with a small upwards force. Okay, um, what's next? Uh, SU27 is the last one. I think I'm going to do helicopters in a different video actually because this is going to um, it's going to take a long time just for the planes. Okay, we seem to have already settled at 308. 307, 308, 307, let's put 307. Flanker, let's see the ground effect. Oops, oh, that's low. That is low. Ah, look at that, we have an increase, a massive increase. Why do you? <laughs> oh dear. That's never a very good thing, is it? Don't worry guys, I can save this. Backstick! Power on! Lost. Right, well that's all the results. Let me just double check I did test everything. Right, here's the data from the experiment. Let's see if we can find any patterns here, anything that's of interest to us. So, Mirage 2000 increased, uh, if we take it from 250 feet to 5 to 30 feet with the same throttle and everything the same, the same trim, then it had an increase of 11 knots when in ground effect, and ground effect was basically within 5 to 30 feet is what we flew with all of the aircraft, for measured from the bottom of the plane to the ground. And on land, over land, it had a speed increase of six knots. What's important there really, I think, is that it, the Mirage 2000 increased in the ground effect of the sea and increased in the ground effect of the land. We can't compare these two directly because they're different speeds. The ground effect probably changes at different speeds. But what we can say is it does have an effect, definite measurable effect on sea and land and um, it makes it go faster. Uh, also, there is a small downforce. Now, this certainly here is not empirical because these, these guys here are pretty empirical. I could repeat them again and again and get the same score. These here are not all empirical because you know, they depend on what trim settings I've got and stuff like that. But generally, they are pretty accurate. If you go down with a Mirage, with neutral trim or whatever I had, you will probably find it does have a downwards force. And this seems to increase the closer I get to the ground within a few feet, within single digits, it seems to suck you down a bit. But still, the force is relatively small. Next, we've got an F-15C. And with this, we had a, as I went into ground effect, we had a reduction in speed of four knots and then a reduction in speed of seven knots. Again, we can't compare them directly because they were at different speeds. But what we can say is that the F-15C definitely reduces speed in the ground effect so it increases the drag over the land and sea so completely opposite to the mirage so at this point uh, i kind of lose the will to live really uh well that's what it is and there was a measurable small up force even with the automatic trim there was a definite definite up force there was something pushing me up uh from the ground next is the flanker and although it was an fc3 plane again with a similar type of model we had nine knots increase on sea and whatever that is seven, six knots increase on the land. And we had a small up force uh, comparable to the F-15 in feel of the controls. Next F-14, for the sea, we had a small reduction in speed of six knots. Over land, we had an almost immeasurable reduction of one knot. And there was a small up force that I was having to fight. Mm, bearing on medium, but probably small medium. F-5, 
there was a small reduction of speed over the sea in the ground effect and an increase in speed near the same kind of speed over land so that really makes no sense at all and a medium up force a springy up force um and it the reason one of the reasons we may have got spurious results here is this is actually a very hard plane to fly you know five feet off the deck the closer you get to the ground the more the spring and it's spring you can't trim it out it's impossible it's spring and you you kind of get into a sine wave oscillation there uh, so that may invalidate the results to a bit but again it should work uh, the f-18 i couldn't even get any speeds the down pull is so strong below 40 feet that you can't trim it out you can't do anything so it's immeasurable so what we can say there is uh well the mirage and the flanker were similar except the down forces felt differently the f-15 and the tomcat were similar with similar feel of force the f-5 was just weird uh, even felt weird and the f-18 is just stupid um i'm not intelligent enough to uh, turn this into logic now to find a pattern and explain why that is so i need you guys now to come in and explain why that is is it just that the flight models are complete bollocks in dcs it might be it's very unlikely from all the other tests i've been doing or is it more intelligent is it more intelligent is it does it know that in real life an f-18 does get sucked into the ground and an f-14 does increase in drag slightly and an su-27 does reduce in drag and an f-15 increases in drag and has a small up push and the mirage reduces in drag and has a small down suck so this needs lots of sitting back stroking beards getting a cup of tea and thinking now uh that's what i've got to present to you i'll do the helicopters next i hope you enjoyed that see you later